this guy's like, yeah, my husband, he doesn't even like music, but he loves you guys and wants you to come up and play Grand Rapids. He's like, you guys are like country Nirvana. <laughs> And I was like, that's it. That's the that's, best description. That, I was like, yeah, that's country nirvana. All right, Amadeus. Rock me, Amadeus. The idea for this record came about during the pandemic and I spent a lot of time thinking about my life, myself, what I was doing and where I wanted to go and I had made a decision to get sober. I started drinking when I was 14 years old and I haven't been sober since. I'm 32 years old now. I spent a majority of my life pissing it away, half drunk, lost, confused, scared, very scared. What was your favorite track to play on this record? For this round? Oh, probably Redemption. Ooh, that's a tough question. You know, I think probably Redemption. Favorite track to play on was definitely Redemption. You know, the concept of Redemption, the main lyric in the song, you know, pain is redemption. Only to find pain is redemption. You know, spending time with myself, forced time with myself, was a blessing in disguise, really. You know, I, I spent a lot of time with my family and a lot of time with my music, and I realized just how little of myself I was devoting to my music and my family, the two most precious things in my life. So when Joshua brought this song, Redemption, to us, we knew it was special when he brought it to us. It, was, it also uh, shows a lot about his progression in life and his sobriety, and it's really, it's really nice to be able to watch, watch him grow as a person. And the idea of redemption, of, of redeeming yourself, you know, of this, this process of self-discovery uh, and the challenge of facing the world and facing all the things I, I spent so much time and energy running from um, has been just an incredible transformation and uh, it's been a beautiful change in my life. <laughs> We're gonna need another studio day just for this part. The day. So the band on this record um, and our current formation. Craig, it's funny, Craig is HR. He's the band's HR. And he has HR experience. But he's always the guy that's asking the questions no one else thinks about. How do you count in German? <laughs> he has a way of speaking to people that's so approachable, it's down to earth. Um, and I love him for that. How about when I told like, Trevor oh, about the PS5 it. release and we were sitting next to each other and he got a PS5 and I didn't get a PS5! Trevor, Trevor to me is a bit of a shaman. So simple and yet so complex in his personality. And he brings this, he brings this, this piece to the band. And his ability as a bass player to just melt into everything. The rhythm, the harmony. Um, he's the glue to me, you know. He's really the glue spiritually and sonically in the band. You know, and I, I always think Trevor and Craig as the rhythm section. Those guys, how do they say it? They drive the bus. I guess you know they they drive the bus. There, Victoria and I, we just hop on the bus and we know we're in good hands. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria. So we go to Victoria. You know, she's my my right hand. Um, I confide in her so much her ability to interpret what it is I'm saying so naturally is such a wonderful thing. 
I trust her and when I bring a song, if it's good, I'll know and she'll know right away and if, if it's not my best work, she, she will tell me. <laughs> Why do I feel so uncomfortable right now? Yeah, Victoria, answer the question. <laughs> and I'd like to talk about Steven Helvig for a while. He's just as much part of this team as any of us. You know, his role as engineer, mixer, producer, friend. You know, I think of him as just an extension of the band, another musician. And then you go into the instrumental section, but it's the chorus progression. Yeah. Fully, everybody stays fully in. Drums are still playing, everybody's playing their chorus again, but you take over the melody on violin, but with some variations, because that yeah. melody is so good. We yeah. should hit it as many times as we possibly yeah. can. Yeah. Uh, you know, another part of the band, and over the years, I think we've earned a lot of trust from each other and faith in each other. And we've gotten to the point now where he will say something and I will know for a 100% fact that it comes from an honest place of sincerity. That was bad. Okay. Try, I, and the other thing too is try pushing. They were born so long ago. Make it kind of intense. Okay. He comes from the heart first, and that means a lot to me because it's the intention of the music and what this music does that is far more important than how it sounds. But it helps that he's got an amazing ear and he can make the stuff sound damn, damn good. I also want to get one take, Trevor, where the bass is like nothing. Just like root notes and nothing but that. Because we might, maybe we end up swelling that with the guitar in a way. Yeah, I was thinking it might be cool to keep it simple and then maybe add. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, if it's just woo, like waves. But first and foremost, his heart's in it. And working with a producer like that, you can't you you can't put a dollar amount on that. We're just fortunate to have him on our team, and that he understands what it is we're trying to do. Spring Pines. Uh, this song kicks off the record. This was a lot of fun for me to write. This song actually came last in the writing process. Um, the story starts in a dark, dark place, and I wanted to be a little more poetic and describe this, this, this place, this Whispering Pines, and the creatures that live there, and this idea of the beast or the demon. And we all have our our demons so to speak, for the lack of a better term. And this song sets that up, I think, very nicely. I wanted to convey a darkness in, in a place that we can get to in times in our lives, that, that place where you feel stuck, it's murky and it's dark. And the goal of this song was to convey that space and, and set it up for the journey that takes place through the record. Just do a one, seven, and then one and have the song come in. Um, I don't know about that idea. You want to do it? One, two, three, four. Because we can do one without it. Yeah, try it. One, two, three, four. Try it. <laughs> Seen an old man at the bar and he was creepy as hell. Sat beside me and my bones, they chill. Waiting around to die. So I've spent a lot of time, you know, belly up to the bar drinking, hanging out with friends. And there's always this kind of guy that comes in and looks like 
you know, he maybe did a tour in Vietnam, sailed Cape Horn, rough around the edges, this looks old, ragged, tattered, you know, and I've run into a few of these guys at the bar through my life. You sit and as you do in a bar, you're drinking and you're sharing stories and it always comes around to this warning, you know, uh, I lost my wife, lost my kids, you know, lost everything, drinking and pissing around in the bars and they always, you know, words of advice, if I were you, I'd get out of here, get straight, you know. And as you do, you, you listen, it affects you a little bit, you ignore it, you show up the next day, you never see the guy again. You know, having those conversations with these people, it's always amazed me how, me personally and a lot of other people, you're seeing this image of a man that, that has already made the mistakes you're making now and, and trying to warn you and you look, you look them right in the face and you take it with a grain of salt and you don't actually make the changes. We're so fortunate sometimes to have somebody who's gone before us and make those mistakes. And this song is a story based around a specific conversation I had with a gentleman just like that. Who am I? Who is this man? This man I've become, it changes. It changes throughout history. And so, you know, looking back on my childhood and my teenage years, my young adult life, and I'm progressing into my 30s, and, and the man I was and the man I am has changed. And I think that there comes a point in your life, and hopefully it happens earlier, um, rather than later like it did in my case, but where you have to honestly look at who this man is. And this song is just the, asking that question, you know, who, who is this man? things that we do that we're not proud of but we need to recognize to move on and to figure out where it is we're going we have to truly understand where it is we've been and this song the dark parts is very much about facing those parts of ourselves the the deep dark parts that are very uncomfortable to explore but i shot the death and down on the dark side of the track I looked him in the eyes Said, boy, don't you ever come back You know, for me, shooting the devil down is a metaphor for, you know, defeating your demons. You know, win winning the, the great battle, winning the battle of good versus evil. I guess if you will and for me you know getting sober and making these changes in my life was me facing the devil my demons my devil and shooting him down shoot the devil down on the dark side of the track look him in the eye and say boy don't you ever come back Tie yourself to the mast like Odysseus did Hear the sirens sing their songs Give it hell and sing along So 
this song, Odessa, is a song I wrote for my daughter. My wife came in to sing on it, which was really quite cool. You know, before we, my daughter was born, um, she was in the band and sang a lot, and I had a lot of fun doing that with her. So it was cool. She came in and, and sang with me, and you know, so this this song is essentially is a letter to my daughter. She, you know, she has been having a tough time in school and dealing with some anxiety and. I know all about that. You know, there's all these things I'd love to talk to her about and things I'd like to explain to her and there's just that barrier of age. And so the song was written, you know, it came from a lot of the lessons that I would like to pass on to her, the things that I've learned. And it was a way to get some of that off my chest um, and put it down into a song. Since your birth, I dream all the time. Vivid dreams of the great things you'll do. This has got it, but it's just a little too thin and sharp. We need to thicken it up. That was a bigger target, I kind of like. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. All right. Jesus. Oh, um, we get that typewriter. It's not a bad idea. Is that the Bible? <laughs> Science! One the other thing we didn't try doing is putting this over the wood block. is a song a lot uh, in a lot of ways inspired by my wife and daughter and the idea of just finding something to guide you more something to drive you a purpose and that's this song this song is um, you know we all need to find that guiding light find guiding light where record peaceful is a great achievement I'm very proud of it but this record is a whole nother level another step up we kind of took a different approach this time writing with the album which was great for me to do because I learned a lot of new things and opened a lot of new doors I've never really explored as a bass player and then as a band you know as a whole coming in with this attitude of like we're gonna use our gut instincts I feel like it's really created this space um, where we're all resorting back to our basic instincts and really playing as a group. I feel like the the last one was more of a conglomeration of songs we liked the most. And we just kind of were like, yeah, let's do this one next, let's do this one next. Whereas this one is more of a, a story from beginning to end. And it's put together with that mindset of being a storyline throughout the album. So I feel like these songs kind of mesh together with themselves more. It makes more sense. This record is a story, it's an arc, it's a journey, it's, it's an encompassing piece of art. You know, we said, we want this record, one, we want it to be better. We want it to be better than our last record. The second thing, we wanted it to be more cohesive. We wanted to explore different sounds. We wanted to push the envelope a little bit from the last record. We were able to do that. Things like layering guitars, uh, doing a little more production stuff on the drums. Um, the vocal harmonies, you know, seeing how far we could take that, stacking those things. And every single decision we made on this record all came back to, you know, the concept of redemption. I mean, this record, listening to it, the songs coming together, I'm so proud of what we've been able to do as a band and uh, what Steven and Max have been able to do 
in their roles as you know producer engineer we, we were able to work together as a team to create this living piece of art just kind of all comes together you know steven might have an idea max might have an idea victoria might have an, you know anybody might have a different idea or different input and then we maybe end up going with that and then it takes a turn that you didn't realize but then it all you know comes together at the end so that's what separates this record apart from our last record. It's, it's all the intention, the intentions of this record, the thought that went into this record. And I think us as a band, we were ready to take that step. We were ready to evolve from that last record. And we've done that. We've done that with this record. in you and in these times of sorrow in endless trials but if purpose to the pain I endure in the darkness there are miles and miles but I found a guiding light in you and in these times of sorrow in endless trials. You give purpose to the pain I endure 